Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about circulation and water flow in my Red Sea Reefer 250. Okay, so it's all about the motion in the ocean. <laughs> Uh, circulation is uh, uh, one of the biggest uh, factors to success in uh, uh, reef keeping I think uh, uh, along with obviously lighting and water chemistry circulation is really important it's the, uh, the principal way for corals to remove detritus uh, and, and mucus that builds up on their coral tissue uh, it's also a mechanism for them to uh, get food that is suspended in the water column so it's really important to think about uh, the circulation that you need to have to uh, for the corals that you want to keep. Uh, there is no one size fits all here. Uh, for SPS tank, I've did a, I've conducted a survey on successful reef keepers and uh, the kind of flow that they have in their tank, and typically anywhere between 25 to 75 x uh, turnover rate uh, is is what you want to aim for. Uh, so I have uh, my tank set at about 50 times the turnover rate. That's the, the volume of your tank multiplied by 50 per hour. Uh, an easy way to get this is to figure out what the maximum output or the typical outputs that you get in your pumps and, and figure out how much power you want to run through your pumps to achieve this 50 times uh, turnover rate. Uh, before I show you my schedule, I'll first talk about my flow equipment. So I have... Uh, uh, two sources of flow uh, in my tank. Uh, the first is flow from my circulation pump. It takes water from my sump up to my display. Uh, and I have uh, a JCOD DCS 4000 uh, as my return pump. I, I used to run a Vectra M1, uh, but when my Vectra M1 uh, broke down, I replaced it with a JCOD as a backup and I haven't bothered removing, uh, uh, replacing the JCOT back with the M1. It's, it's been running reasonably well, so I'm going to keep it in my tank for now. Uh, so I have the JCOT running at about 40%. And uh, so again, that, that provides a little bit of circulation in terms of pumping water uh, from the sump into the tank uh, through my return nozzles, which I modified uh, uh, into a split T that pump water into the corners of my tank. Uh, but the main uh, circulation in my display is handled by two Ecotec MP10s, and uh, there, there was, you know, some some debate about whether the MP10s fit on the side of the Red Sea Reefer 250 glass, and I could say with uh, confidence that they do. Uh, you know, they've been working on my tank for the past two years. I have the two MP10s uh, uh, sitting opposite to each other, uh, and I vary uh, the settings of the MP10s uh, throughout the day. Instead of running one program uh, during the whole day, I cycle through different uh, settings of the Ecotec uh, MP10s to just kind of vary the flow. I, I think it's important not just to have, uh, uh, like, uh, instead of just uh, setting a goal for how much water you want to move, I think it's also useful to make sure that the water is kind of coming around from different angles and different sides. So having two MP10s allows you the opportunity to kind of shift uh, through different cycles, create standing waves, and create situations where the lights, uh, the flow switches direction from one side to another side. I think it helps in terms of clearing detritus, but also make sure that corals are not getting hit with the same uh, uh, flow during the entire 24-hour uh, period. Okay guys, so here is my schedule for both uh, uh, MP10 pumps. Uh, you'll notice that uh, they're both running on average at 80% for most of the day. So I start at, uh, the, light, uh, the, sorry, the flow program uh, from midnight to 7.30 p.m. and here the pump is running at 80%. So that's a bit unusual. Most people like to slow down the pumps during the night, but I actually have them running pretty high. Uh, the reason for that is uh, it's just you know all of uh, it. It gives the the pumps a chance to uh, uh, clear out the detritus that has built up from the fish pooping or or uneaten food uh, during the day. 
So after this uh, seven and a half period of 80% uh, constant, what I do is I very briefly for five minutes have both pumps running at 100%. And that uh, is kind of a, uh, helps clear up any remaining detritus, but also it's kind of a, <laughs> a signal to my fish that it's time to wake up because I usually feed after this period. Uh, then I have uh, uh, both pumps for about 20 minutes running on reef crest. And reef crest is a random mode where uh, it, it says 100% uh, power, but actually what uh, reef crest is doing, it's randomizing the speed of the pump anywhere between uh, uh, like zero and 100%. Uh, uh, so on average, uh, uh, the pump is gonna be at about 50% during this period. Uh, so I then go through a period of uh, uh, a tidal, uh, period called tidal swell. Uh, it's a specific program uh, developed uh, for the Ecotech Vortec pumps. And it's a two and a half hour period where the pump is on average running at 90%. And what happens is, is one pump ramps up uh, from low levels to this maximum of 90%. Uh, and the other pump is running anti-sync. So it's, it's anti-synchronized to uh, this main pump. So when one pump is running at 90%, the other pump is running at 10%. And so on. So uh, what the master pump is doing is, is ramping up and ramping down, ramping up and ramping down, creating these waves, surges of, uh, of flow. And the other pump is, uh, is working opposite uh, to that. So when, when one pump surges, the other pump calms down a little bit. And so this is a, a high energy type of water movement that is, uh, that is pretty good in a reef and an SPS system. Uh, then after this period, uh, I go through uh, another two and a half uh, uh, hour cycle called nutrient transport uh, transport mode, and here one pump is acting as a master and the other pump is acting as a as an anti a slave in an anti sync way. So this uh, uh, this mode is meant to create short uh, standing wave, uh, so the pump pulses uh, for uh, a very brief period of time. And then after you have a standing wave going, then what happens is both pumps turn at, at high levels. And the idea here is to get the standing waves are getting the detritus off of the rock. And then the surge of flow helps the detritus go uh, into the overflow. After this, what I do is uh, after this nutrient transport mode, then I shift through a, a few shorter uh, uh, cycles. So I start with reef crest. Again, that's the random uh, pulse mode on one pump uh, and opposite to it, I actually have, uh, I'm just gonna scroll this a little bit here. There we go, that's better. So uh, Reef Crest is running at 100% on, uh, on one pump. And then on the other pump, I have Lagoon Mode, which is kind of like a random, uh, uh, random uh, flow. Uh, and, and but it's the changes in terms of going from like let's say 50 to 100 percent to 60 percent uh happen uh, more gradual with with the lagoon so you could think of reef crest and lagoon as, as very similar uh a randomized flow but the changes of flow happen much quicker in the reef crest versus the lagoon so i'm, I'm trying to to get the both the best of both worlds here with one one pump running the reef crest and the other pump running the lagoon then I have a standing wave generated uh, for about an hour, about 50 minutes using the pulse mode. Uh, so the, uh, the uh, pumps, one pump is uh, turning on and off uh, at uh, point, every 0.62, uh, 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 0.62 of a second. And then the other pump is acting as a slave in an anti-sync way. So when one pump is on, the other pump is off and vice versa. And then after this uh, standing wave, Again, I'm just gonna scroll this a little bit. Uh, after the standing wave, I'm, I'm doing kind of the opposite where I have one pump now is running the lagoon at 75% and the other pump is running the reef crest at 100%. And then I switch the flow up again where so the main pump is running, uh, well, one of the pumps is running reef crest at 100% and the opposite pump is running uh, lagoon at 75%. So what, what I'm doing with the switching between Lagoon and reef crest is I'm essentially letting one pump run at a consistent high output and the other pump uh, The other pump running with a more kind of random uh, uh, random power 
so that kind of changes the major direction of the flow but also creates some conditions where both pumps are on at very high uh, levels and that, create, uh, that again helps with uh, moving some of the detritus from the tank. And then finally, at around uh, 2, uh, uh, sorry, 20, uh, what is that, is that 8 p.m.? I think that's 8 p.m. So around 8 p.m., both pumps go to 80% uh, uh, power, constant power, and that continues all the way till 7.30 in, in the next day. So I've done the math on this and, and I figure, figured out, uh, given uh, what I know about the output of the MP10s in terms of like gallons per hour of flow, and given these values, you could figure out what the average uh, uh, watt circulation in my tank is. And it is about 50 times the tank volume of the Retsu Reefer 250. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video was uh, helpful for you uh, in terms of uh, figuring out how much flow you want in your tank. And if you have MP10s, then uh, what's the best way to kind of uh, make use of the different options and the different programs that uh, Ecotech provides for them. So if this is the first time you've uh, seen my channel, I would really appreciate uh, if you could subscribe. And uh, uh, there's going to be more content coming soon about uh, the tank and how it's maintained as part of uh, my two-year update video. And I've also, I'm also putting the finishing touches on my uh, SBS uh, uh, time lapse of uh, showing growth over a two-year period that the tank has been set up. So uh, hope to see you soon. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe.